Hey, good day and good evening, everyone. I hope you can all hear me and that you uh, can let me know if so and if everything is working fine. I hope that you have a great day and I'm glad that you've joined us. Actually, we have met here for some time now. Uh, we meet here week by week and uh, we have uh, been doing IVF webinars for over a year now. So we have a great source of over 50 IVF webinars. So I hope that you uh, can check it out and use this huge source of knowledge. Uh, this is our partners of IVF webinars and thanks to them, we uh, do IVF webinars every week, Eiselspende, Fertility Clinics Abroad and Donor Conception Network. And we are here today uh, with the experts from ISIDA IVF, Dr. Svetlana Shianova and Dr. Ina Moros, to talk about endometrial receptivity, window of implantation, and endometrial scratching, and how and when they influence your IVF success. Uh, the presentation will take around 20 minutes, and after that, we will start the Q&A session. And of course, if you have any questions, you can type those questions uh, in the chat section, starting even from now. Uh, IVF webinars are being recorded, of course, and the rewatch and the video is available on our website uh, next day after the IVF webinar. So it will be uh, ready and running tomorrow. That's all from me for now. Etlana and Ina, are you ready to start? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. Welcome, fingers crossed, and let's do this. Okay. So my name is Dr. Ina Maros and Svetlana Shiana, and today yeah. we can explain you in uh, simple words the very important issues such as endometrial receptivity, the window of implantation, and endometrial scratching. So what is endometrial receptivity? As you know, the endometrium is the inner lining of the uterus. It can, has to be in the right and perfect condition uh, to accept the embryo. There are four stages for the, uh, accepting the embryo, such as orientation, apposition, attachment, and invasion. Okay, so even if we have the endometrium in the perfect condition, we have to have the perfect embryo quality. So what does it mean? We need to have the embryo, the genetic, a good condition without any anomalies to accept the, the embryo and to have the perfect stage of this uh, process. So if, if you can see, if we have the perfect endometrium in the right condition, it can be right stages of the implantation. And But if we have some changes in the endometrium, it can cause the recurrent implantation failures. So that's why it's so important to, uh, to understand what we have the problem with the endometrium and how we can influence on that. Okay. So the menstrual cycle has to, uh, has to be divided uh, into two stages. The first stage uh, is uh, uh, the first 13 to 15 days of menstrual cycle. And the, this stage is responsible by the uh, hormone of estrogen that create the thickness of endometrium, the growth of endometrium. And the second stage is a, a secretory phase that is responsible for the changes for the uh, glands, uh, the number of glands and vessels in the endometrium, and it's become very acceptable and very good for the implantation of the embryo. As you can see, if they have the thickness of endometrium less than seven millimeters, it's not a good. Uh, condition for the acceptance of embryo. If we have more than eight uh, millimeters, we have good accepting uh, um, condition for the embryo and we can proceed with the next stages. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you can see, the endometrium has a very difficult constitution and we have to evaluate this with the different uh, markers and different factors we, we can understand how it can influence for the endometrial invasion. So we, we should use uh, different 
uh, immune cells and signaling factors and nutrients and physical environment to see if we have some endometritis for, such as microbiome and as well as expression at different uh, proteins such as genes or exosome they can accept the great quality embryo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for now, why is it so important to understand what is it window of implantation? If you have the regular cycle of 28 days and with the possible ovulation around 14 days of your menstrual cycle, the best time for implantation or the best time for embryo transfer has to be on 19 to 21st day of your standard 28 day cycle. So this means it's a window in implantation. It means your endometrium is most acceptable and is ready to accept your embryo. That's why it's so important to understand what is this window of implantation. As you can see from this slide, there are a lot of genes we can be expressed on, on these days and at different uh, stages of the menstrual cycle. Then we have the receptive uh, endometrium. We have more than 400 genes that can be expressed and can be evaluated by PCR method in a real-time manner by a point uh, test we, that we can use in our clinic. So if we have this test and how we can evaluate the uh, result and how we can use in our, in our practice and in your treatment plan. For example, if we have the pre-receptive uh, endometrium, it means we have uh, to uh, postpone the embryo transfer day for a couple of days or maybe one or two days. It depends on your situation and we need to increase the days of progesterone supplementation. If we have the receptive uh, um, result, it means is this the right day for implantation and this is the best day for embryo transfer day. Exactly it, after five or six days after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is exactly the time for after five or six uh, days after the ovulation, like it's natural cycle, yes. And if we have pre-receptive um, endometrium results, so it means we need to shorten the days, I mean, to have an embryo transfer a little bit earlier and uh, less days of progesterone supplementation. Okay, so why is it so important uh, to use this test? As you can see from research, then we test majority of the patients, more than 2,000 uh, patients. We have um, more than 80% of receptor endometrial. It means it's the right day for embryo transfer day. But uh, more than 12% have non-receptive endometrium. It means so 80% can be pre-receptive and 20% can be post-receptive, as we described before. That's why up to 25% of general population can have displaced window for implantation and we can uh, lose the embryo and we can uh, postpone the yeah. chance of, yeah. of implantation mm -hmm. and achieve pregnancy. Yeah, to achieve the pregnancy. Okay, next slide. Mm -hmm. So, the repoint test that we can use in our clinic, when we can do this and how we can use in our practice. The, first of all, we can use with the recurrent pregnancy failures. Then we have the, we are planning the embryo transfer with the pre-implantation genetic testing of the embryos. And when we suspect a change in implantation window after uh, uh, recur recurrent pregnancy losses. Yeah. In the name uh, of uh, suprafertile yeah, in, in those women that uh, is known as super fertile, that can accept the all quality embryos, even if it's not great quality, but the window of the implantation is displaced and then accept all the um, embryos that is not good quality. So, as you can see, from the previous slide, there is three main factors that can influence for the best outcome and the best uh, in, um, to the best implantation in a process. This is embryo quality. It has to be without genetic anomalies and um, with 
with a great quality, the endometrial condition without any changes and has to be receptive and the interaction between both. Without all three factors, there is no success on the process. And a few words about endometrial scratching. Uh, what is this and when we can use this? As you can see, endometrial scratch is like a small endometrial injury. The, its technique we can reapply small pipal biopsy to the endometrium to create some injury on the lining. That can be uh, irritation on the endometrium and uh, for the uh, regeneration of the tissue and somehow improvement of its receptive, uh, receptivity. For now, uh, there is no randomized uh, research that can Im improve and prove this effectiveness. But sometimes, in rare cases, then we suspect immunological factors of the infertility in the women, we can use this method, but very carefully after a um, thorough evaluation of phenomenologic factors and, and endometrial phenomenological issues in this woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for your attention. And now uh, you can answer, uh, you can make question and we try to answer uh, for this uh, complicated term. Mm -hmm. uh, and Thank you very much for your presentation. Please type the questions in the chat section. We will then take the questions uh, one by one. So, how long is the result of endometrium receptivity map valid for, for how many cycles after the test has been done? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this results available for a long period of time. So if you're planning your IVF treatment, or if you have recurrent pregnancy losses for, for the extended period of time, you can use this method just once, the biopsy, and it's very important and informative for the next cycles and for the next um, periods of time, even for a couple of years. And if there is no changes in your health and etc. Even if you have delivery or cesarean section, it not uh, changes after a few years because it's very exactly uh, analysis um, that measure by genetic testing. Thank you for your explanation. Uh, somebody is typing a question, so uh, we will take a second uh, for that. Um, I encourage you to type the questions. Uh, uh, everybody, don't be shy. Yeah. Take a chance and ask the experts. And uh, yes. We have the next questions uh, coming up. So the next question for you, well, is it easier to prepare women for the transfer in IVF programs with donor eggs? If yes, could you explain why? Mm -hmm. uh, the preparation um, um, for the IVF program with the donor eggs, it, it doesn't um, changes with the regular preparation on the medium. It depends if you use the fresh cycle of the uh, donor or you use a, a cryo cycle or cryo all sites. If you use the cryo sites, all sites, there is the same preparation, uh, long or short protocol. It depends on your situation. You don't need the extra synchronization with the donor. But if you have, if you use the donor, the fresh cycle, uh, uh, it's a little bit complicated because we need to synchronize the uh, donor and your cycle and it takes a little bit longer time sometimes can uh, one month or two months and depend on the your situation and depends on the uh, day of cycle of the donor mm -hmm. it's uh, majority of our cycle uh, we make with uh, uh, vitrificate donor oocytes and um, easier for us um, mm -hmm. prepare patients. Um, method of prepare very uh, sophisticated. Uh, so it, uh, very depends depend, uh, depends of um, uh, nature if patients have ovulation or no. If uh, um, age of women young and uh, she has her own ovulation it can be in your own natural cycle 
it's a rare case. Majority of cases, it's a, um, a method with HRT therapy with or without uh, pre-treatment of the capital special um, hormones uh, who stop uh, uh, rock of your ex of ovaries. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for explaining this and, of course, uh, for the question. Uh, we will then take the next question, which is, what can cause the change of endometrium receptivity? Um, as we explained before, there is a different changes. Uh, sometimes we can, we can find those factors such as uh, immunological factors, or we can find the chronic endometritis by biopsy. Uh, we can find uh, um, endometritis, yes, and um, uh, we can try to put the good embryo, like uh, with genetic testing before, um, but um, we cannot understand what happened after this because we try to exclude all the factors before that we can know for now for a search for the for the whole world that can give us information about receptivity and uh, all that uh, factors we can exclude we can try to uh, to uh, uh, invade in our practice but how we can change receptivity is a little bit unclear for now mm -hmm. Yes, and it also it's very uh, depends on that stage uh, of um, diseases that you ha might have at uh, the same time, such as endometriosis or adenomyosis. adenomyosis. The different changes in the hormonal status we can change the endometrial receptivity. Or, for example, uh, if we can use the the simple vitamin D, it uh, has been shown that increases receptivity for endometrium. So the different. Um, Factors we can try to, to accept and try to change, identify, uh, identify mm -hmm. but uh, we cannot guarantee that after that we have the 100% the chance that it can be receptive. That's why we use this method, the, uh, the repoint, uh, and try to uh, see the window of implantation that is the best time for you to accept this embryo because sometimes uh, from the research it uh, has to be shown 24 hours for accepting this embryo but some research can be only 12 hours uh, for accepting this embryo. So we have to be very precise and very strict to this, this day, and we have to exclude all the factors that can influence before that. Now, and uh, uh, very uh, important usual investigation uh, before IVF cycle, investigation for inflammation, for uh, any other um, gynecology diseases, mm -hmm. and after prepare, before uh, embryo transfer and very important before um, testing embryo for genetic abnormalities uh, make uh, this special analysis for uh, identification of receptivity mm -hmm. thank you for all the information which we just have been given from you and we will then take the next question which is this one? Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin E600 and L-arginine 1000, mm -hmm. uh, vitamin B complex, uh, stink and selenium advantages for increasing endometrial thickness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there are different uh, um, supplements such as vitamin E, L-arginine, zinc, selenium, corn, zinc, Q10, uh, mm -hmm. and cetera, vitamin etc a lot of supplements and can somehow improve the receptivity or thickness of endometrium but this is the adjuvant methods and there is no research that can show us that can improve receptivity and especially the thickness the thickness of endometrium is responsible for estrogens and um, so we get, uh, that's why we need to, um, to make sure to have enough the estrogen and to, and to increase the blood flow in the endometrium and to see and to, to improve the uh, receptivity and the thickness of endometrium. What we use in our usual practice, uh, these pills uh, in um, 
special category of patients. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends of history, uh, their previous cycle, previous attempts, and depend of um, uh, their level of these vitamins in uh, blood. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, exact uh, vitamin E, uh, vitamin B, zinc, selenium, and arginine, a very important vitamin D2, because it's important for um, future um, pregnancy, mm -hmm. future pregnancy uh, carrier. Pregnancy carrier. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answers. We have um, very similar question, so maybe you will add something. Are there recommendations mm -hmm. for nutrition and supplements to mm -hmm. increase endometrium receptivity? Мы считаем, что биодобавки достаточно важны mm -hmm. для пациента, но подбираем их индивидуально под его состояние mm -hmm. на, на сегодняшний mm -hmm. момент mm -hmm. по предварительному обследованию. You can be try to, to be on a healthy diet, but uh, then we have the IVF uh, treatment. We cannot use and suggest a lot of vitamins and supplements that, we, that is required during the um, IVF treatment and during the embryo transfer treatment. So that's why we need to use all those supplements and uh, to increase the endometrium receptivity. And after the thorough ev evaluation of those nutrients, we can uh, we can try to adjust the vitamins and supplements uh, according to your uh, situation and of course we advise to use the vitamin e and folic acid is very important uh, for for the preparation for the pregnancy vitamin d and uh, sometimes uh, the other su supplements that we, we require according to your case so uh, not everything is uh, for everybody so we have to be very specialized with every patient and choose the exactly what what you need exactly case but unfortunately we don't have magic pills yeah for uh, for improve mm -hmm. uh, receptivity and sickness of endometrium mm -hmm. unfortunately we don't have magic yeah, pill yeah unfortunately maybe in the near future <laughs> Thank you for your answer and for the question um, we will then take a look for the next one what do you think about ERA test? Do you believe it might be helpful in some cases? For example, lack of implementation despite good quality of embryos. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the ERA test is uh, more I, it's more popular on the market because it's more than 10 uh, years on the market, but uh, the main issue and the same as the uh, repoint test, but the method of um, uh, evaluation expression of the genes is the NGS testing, and we use the PCR method, uh, the exact uh, genes that requires for implantation. For ERA test, it's uh, more than 200 genes, okay. but it's very comprehensive. It's only for receptive receptivity, it's for all the all the genes that can be on the menstrual cycle, it's uh, more than uh, uh, 200 I, and it's that's why it's uh, a little bit expensive and uh, it's not uh, usable for all the patients because of the uh, price and uh, in uh, our test report test we use the exactly uh, 50 genes by PCR method the real-time manner that we just see the uh, the genes uh, Expression the genes that are responsible exactly for receptivity of endometrial. So that's why we don't need uh, so many genes, and we do, it's much uh, and less expensive as an ERA test. Uh, for today, ERA test it's like uh, etalon methods for identify uh, exactly time for implantation of embryos. And thank you for explaining uh, this to us. Mm. Next question will be this one. Is the endometrial scratching beneficial only in the following cycle or also two or more cycles later? Uh, 
Um, usually, uh, it um, believes that we use we can use only the cycle in one cycle before the embryo transfer. We don't need to use the uh, any other cycles because uh, uh, it's it's um, it's not beneficial, and we don't need like extra uh, injury to the intermediate. We just need a little bit to create this uh, uh, injury and regeneration, and somehow improve the receptivity. It's a little injury and effect of this injury we have on the next cycle, but not in after two or three cycle, uh, beca uh, because reason of these methods, it's um, uh, improve uh, blood flow for endometrium and effect of this injury for two, uh, maximum four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, usually we uh, use uh, this injury uh, just before menstruation and after menstruation, we prepare endometrium for embryo transfer. In some cases, we use uh, just after menstruation, approximately um, a third, fourth or fifth day of cycle, not more than six. And then we continue to prepare for endometrium and we um, and we wait uh, mm. that uh, growth and blood flow will be better than mm -hmm. previous mm -hmm. cycle if you have seen endometrium mm -hmm. and we have uh, mm, loss uh, negative results and previous embryo transfer. As we discussed before, we use only in a, a special patient, in a special case, we don't use this method for, for every patient because... Uh, we have special immunological yeah. tests. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a special test uh, uh, from uh, uterus, from endometrium. Uh, immunological profile? Yeah, for, for immunological profile of the endometrium. Uh, and after that, we can understand. Yeah, we, we investigate a natural killer cells, uterus natural killer cells, and depend on uh, the activity or passivity, uh, we prescribe scratching because it's an injury. It's so maybe we, we have to be very careful. Uh, careful okay. because it's maybe um, harmful for patients in some times. Yes, and in connection to what you've just said, we have a uh, relevant question. So I will take um, this one. Does endometrial scratch cause injury or scar tissue forming? And will it cause endometriosis and adenomyosis? Thanks. Um, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. No, this is uh, not like uh, the injury that can create the scar or somehow the big injury to the endometrium. It's a little bit of, uh, it's like a, a pipal biopsy that we, we can use, for example, to check the endometritis. It's a small tube that we uh, put into the endometrium. It takes just a little bit of cells and uh, it's even, uh, it's only for one cycle. And even we have the period we have the regeneration, the whole endometrium. So we don't don't be scary about some big injury or scar tissue forming, and especially making the endometriosis or adenomyosis. Because endometriosis, adenomyosis is more about the hormonal changes. It's more an influence of estrogens and there is no uh, genetic disease. Yes. Uh, predisposition as it's not enough uh, pre uh, the second phase uh, hormone progesterone in this uh, patient so there is no um, interaction between the endometrial scratching and the hormonal changes of the of the patient and uh, we use only uh, we use um, uh, not very often Mm -hmm. this methods of therapy of endometrium only once or twice twice uh, for period of treatment and not more than twice if we uh, if, uh, if we, don't we don't have the result after the first or maximum second time uh, we do not recommend this, not uh, this uh, yeah the, this test because uh, uh, there is no be beneficial effect from this uh, uh, method we can use only one or maximum two times during the IVF treatment and thank you for the answer. We will then um, check the next question. 
are there any statistics how much it increased the chances of implant after scratching? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, why I smiled Very with it, like, yeah, because uh, even we, even our clinic, we don't have those uh, statistics, and even in the whole uh, world, in the IVF world, we don't have that uh, research. We have only research; it can somehow to improve receptivity, but we don't have the one hundred percent beneficial effect of this method. That's why it's not so popular method, and uh, there is no statistic about this. Maybe if, uh, yeah. Uh, but the, yeah, but we don't have that. The database that it show us that is uh, that increase the chance of the implantation after the scratching. Academic research don't uh, have um, good proven uh, for this method for uh, for prescribe this methods and. Um, in a, a lot a lot of investigation last 10 years I make uh, this database of patients but we don't have proof uh, database of this uh, effectiveness of this method mm -hmm. and yes thank you for the answer as well uh, the next question will be about endometrial scratch <laughs> uh, thin endometrium before transfer um as we discussed before uh we cannot use this method for every woman and for every woman so, uh, only for those women who have immunological issues or for thin endometrium, recurrent thin endometrium, then begins the different methods they use in a different medication to the, increase the thickness, but we don't have the results. On, on, in that case, we can uh, think about this endometrial scratching to help this woman. It's like mm -hmm. adjuvant therapy. Mm -hmm. It's so, not uh, uh, as well, no main, uh, uh, main therapeutic uh, method. method to use in a, in that in practice yes and uh, if we have seen endometrium we prescribe just before the uh, cycle when we make embryo transfer or in the early early phase of menstrual cycle second third fourth maximum fifth not more yes great Thank you for the information on this uh, topic as well. And then the next question will be, is it necessary to wait after the repoint test before returning frozen embryos and how long? Okay, uh, for the uh, results, we need to, to wait uh, for maximum four weeks to have the results. So that's why uh, we can, uh, if you have the frozen embryos, there is no necessary and there is no influence to be in this stage. So we can do this test. And after the results, we can we can uh, have the embryo transfer day according to the results. And very important, prepare patient uh, just exactly uh, the same like in a cycle when we make embryo transfer. Mm -hmm. If we plan make embryo transfer in cycle with HRT therapy, it should be uh, this um, analysis should be take. Uh, the same cycle. We prescribe HRT therapy for 10 days uh, estrogen pills or gels and some dose and then plus uh, six, uh, usually it's six days of uh, pills of progesterone, vaginal progesterone and after six days we uh, put uh, this analysis, it's a uh, aspiration biopsy from uh, uterus, from cavity of uterus and uh, after uh, we have results. We prepare the same method, the same way uh, this uh, woman for embryo transfer. According to the results. Yeah. Yeah. It, it we plan make embryo transfer in natural cycle. We should um, estimate uh, day of ovulation, exactly day of ovulation, and uh, count uh, 
special day for analysis. Next cycle the same, but if we have uh, uh, if patient need uh, egg donation cycle, in majority cases, unfortunately, we don't have own um, regular cycle. relation and regular cycle. Yeah. Thanks for the detailed answer. And uh, then the next question we will take a closer look is this one. Can you please explain more about the type of immunological factors that can affect implantation? And after how many failed own egg cycles would you start to look into this? It's a monological profile of endometrium and um, it's a very uh, rare uh, analysis when we don't have um, Mm, results after three attempts uh, with egg donation uh, cycle. Uh, we prescribe, it's not the first uh, uh, analysis uh, for investigation. It's the, can uh, say last, uh, because in the first uh, place um, for uh, success rate, it's um, um, quality of embryos. A quality of embryos, it's about 70% of chance. And uh, only 30% of chance, it's our endometrium. And um, quality of endometrium very depends of uh, good thickness, uh, good dissolution. It's a special process then start after um, prescribe uh, progesterone. It's very important, good blood flow in um, in endometrium if we have uh, good quality of embryos if we have good thickness of endometrium if we make a special um, procedure uh, not, not procedure spe special investigation uh, for window of implantation error or in our cases it's a repoint uh, and we don't have result next step we make uh, um, Immuno immunological profile endometrium. of endometrium. Yes, it's uh, the same way. We take aspiration biopsy from endometrium and we uh, very precise investigate natural chiral cells. It should, uh, it may be three ca ca categories, categories um, uh, activate, activate. Uh, it's we have a lot of natural uh, killer cells if we have a lot of natural killer cells we activate and when we have uh, less uh, natural killer cells it uh, and depend of these results uh, we decide um, prescribe special therapy and uh, if, uh, if if i uh, want to be uh, Precise uh, when we have low level of natural killer cells, we prescribe scratching. Mm -hmm. And I want to add uh, before the uh, investigation on the myological factor, we need to exclude the endometritis because sometimes the inflammation of the endometrium can create the bad environment for natural killers. So make sure your doctor will exclude the endometritis. And after the endometri excluding this, you, you uh, check your natural killers and to see, do you need any other uh, uh, investigation and methods to improve uh, yes, the absolutely. receptive? It's receptive. very important because a lot of patients, unfortunately, have uh, chronic endometritis. It's not... Um, open uh, disease we uh, yeah. then, then, not then you're not planning the IVF treatment of you're not planning the pregnancy at all uh, you cannot understand at all that you have the chronic endometritis because the regular pap test or regular smear uh, cannot uh, see if you have this uh, uh, inflammation inside your uterus only the immuno histochemical methods but like a papal biopsy can um, see and identify the exactly cells immunological cells to see if the if there is a presence of uh, inflammation 
and at the same time the natural killers presence in your endometrium and do we need to treat, treat both or just one so uh, actually we, we use this very regular in our IVF treatment and even before the first embryo transfer um, and it proves uh, the results uh, in and uh, from the first attempt when we investigate our patients we can see uh, that uh, chronic endometritis very close with a high level of nature killer cells the uterus nature killer cells mm -hmm. so they, that's why we, we have to be very careful about this mm -hmm. thank you for all the information you gave us and for the question as well the next question for you will be which factors can influence the endometrium receptivity and what can cause the change of the window of implantation? Mm -hmm. There's all the same factors that we were talking about. This is uh, the monological and uh, hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the um, uh, quality of embryo and um, all the different factors we can see by uh, regular methods like instrumental methods on investigation. Uh, ultrasound, by ultrasound we can see the only the thickness, uh, how it grows and how it changes to secretory phase. But we cannot see uh, what is inside. That's why we can use the additional investigation and to see uh, how we can improve receptivity. But all those factors we, we can describe before can influence on the chance uh, uh, to have the window of implantation. And but um, in in general, the window of implantation is um, uh, your uh, uh, is, is a special thing for your organism, and it depends on the expression of those genes and those genes uh, it's supposed to be uh, dependent from the hormones that your organism provide during the whole cycle um, that's why if you don't have the regular ovulation of your you don't have the natural cycle a regular one we, we create your um, uh, cycle with uh, hormonal replacement therapy and we can create exactly days uh, for estrogen, for uh, proliferative phase, and then for secretory phase, because then we use the progesterone, they use the good thickness uh, endometrium, like more than seven millimeters to the secretory one, and uh, we can suggest that on the uh, fifth or sixth day of supplementation, we have the best receptive endometrium. But we, uh, as, you, uh, as we, uh, we're talking about, 80% have the regular receptor window, like uh, on the fifth day of uh, supplementation or the uh, progesterone, but 12% uh, uh, percent of those patients uh, don't have the, uh, the receptor endometrium. That's why it's so important, especially if you have recurrent pregnancy failures or unsuccessful attempt to use this method right before um, the embryo transfer uh, to, to, to have success with this uh, the cycle. Uh, if patients don't have own uh, natural cycle, own regular menstruation, regular periods, uh, we obligatory should prescribe uh, estrogen and then plus estrogen, progesterone, and only after that we can take analysis. It's a very, um, very important and precise of this method uh, where it depend of estrogen plus progesterone therapy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the answer. And we will take the next question. Do you perform endometrial scratching in a pill cycle with anticonceptive mm -hmm. pill or the uh, frozen embryo transfer cycle? It, it can be. It can be uh, when patients uh, take uh, anticonceptive pill, um, sickness of, of endometrium uh, very thin. No, no uh, more than uh, three, five or six millimeters. And um, when we make injury just before uh, menstruation, we can improve and influence the next cycle, prepare of endometrium. It can be, yes. Thank you. Um, we will jump to the next question. 
you test the endometrial tissue with biopsy on NK cells and endometrium inflammation? In which case, uh, which patients are beneficial? Yeah, we usually test this test very um, often, um, especially in those patients that we have uh, like uh, one or two embryos and we don't want to lose this embryo. They use this method before the embryo transfer cycle. So they do this um, biopsy uh, and we have the result uh, for inflammation and the same time for NK cells. So the result will be uh, the same and uh, if you have the inflammation or some changes in CAR cells, we, we treat right before and after the uh, repeated results, after the treatment, this is negative result, we can uh, proceed with embryo transfer. Yes, and sometimes um, it requires not only one cycle of the treatment because sometimes we have the resistant endometritis to the regular antibiotics treatment. So we need to change the antibiotics to the different one or sometimes we can uh, use the special antibiotics that is susceptible or that you um, susceptible or sensitive in your case and we add special uh, immunological yes. therapy and we add the same immunological therapy and uh, different medication to improve uh, the uh, the condition of the endometrium and to have the a negative result uh, um, after the inflama inflammation mm -hmm. we use this very often yeah Thanks a lot for that. And uh, the next uh, question is, what are the natural killer cells? How can I know? What is my condition? Um, it's not obligatory for majority of patients. Uh, it's not um, routine analysis. Uh, very important embryos, very important sickness in the metrium, the uh, third place it's a window of implantation but uh, natural killer cells and fourth or maybe more uh, place uh, for reasons of negative attempt um, you can make uh, aspiration biopsy and take uh, some cells for um, uh, not gistology but for immunological profile mm -hmm. Um, but uh, usually uh, we don't need this test regular because uh, then we have the great quality embryo, especially after NGS testing, after to ex avoid any genetic anomalies. When we have the great endometrium with the right window of implantation without any inflammation, the chance of uh, um, implantation and especially for live birth rate is in our case is around 60% for first attempt. So if you don't have the, your success from the first attempt, the second attempt, when investigating the different analysis, not even the killer cells right away. We have a lot, a lot of other uh, in investigation, the additional investigation to see um, why it's not happened from the first time. And then if we have the repeated failures, like uh, three or, or more, we can use this test to see, do we need to change something in the immunological profile? Do we need to extra medicine or extra uh, treatment during the embryo transfer cycle? Uh, we prescribe this analysis not before than after two negative attempts. Only if we have two negative attempts with embryos uh, uh, which uh, right. produce after egg donation cycle and we have high quality of embryos and two transfer without results. Next step, we can investigate uh, your um, natural uterus natural killer cells. Thank you for uh, the answer. And we will then mm, uh, take a quick look for the next question. Is there a risk of, of impact of the overdose of any vitamin? Uh, yes. Uh, so some of the vitamins uh, has to be very carefully uh, taken. For example, vitamin A in overdose can uh, create the bad environment for the future fetus, future embryo. And so they have to be very uh, careful with the overdose of vitamins. And when, uh, if you use 
for a longer time, for example, more than three months, or the higher dose of vitamin D or vitamin E, etc., and other supplements, you have to check your uh, profile uh, with your doctor. The doctor will prescribe you and to see if you don't have the overdose of those vitamins because then you have the overdose, you have the, uh, the same negative impact of your uh, embryo transfer of your whole uh, treatment plan during In the IVF, IVF treatment, and especially during the pregnancy. And um, we and we change the dose of vitamins right away after the positive uh, pregnancy test. So we don't use the same uh, dose of vitamin E or vitamin D uh, after the positive pregnancy. We decrease the dose and adjust to the pregnancy level. So that's why we need to be very careful and you need to follow the instruction of your doctors during the whole process. Yes, uh, usually we prescribe uh, um, complex of vitamins, it's enough for good supplementation. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for the answer. And now we will take a question um, which you were talking about a little before, but the second part is uh, maybe you can add anything. Is there any danger in endometrial scratching, but what day should you perform it? Now we, we discussed this before, mm -hmm. so uh, the, uh, we can use only in a few cases uh, after the uh, parallel investigation um, of the endometrium, uh, and uh, uh, we can use only uh, on that uh, cycle or the cycle before on exactly uh, days from the second to the fifth day of your periods, and but no or more than one or two times during the whole process of uh, preparation for embryo transfer? Uh, because it's a adjuvant therapy, mm -hmm. uh, majority of investigate recommend uh, make this uh, procedure just before menstruation. And next cycle, prepare endometrium for embryo transfer. But we uh, sometimes change uh, this procedure and we uh, make uh, scratching just before, before menstruation in early um, follicular phase. It's a two, um, two times uh, for our prescribe and we change it depend of situation. We don't have a strict um, reasons or strict uh, what is that? Yeah. indication uh, strict indications uh, for scratching and exactly a period of time like like a window of implantation that is so important to have on that day mm -hmm. on that time. Mm -hmm. And thank you for explaining uh, this as well to us. Um, Next question, do you treat endometrial inflammation with uh, doxycyclinum? Yeah, we uh, we start with doxycycline from the uh, from the uh, first uh, time and more than 70% will respond to this therapy, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, around 20% will not respond to the, this medication and we will change to another medication according to the, to the case. Uh, when we um, make routine Routine test for endometritis. Uh, it's um, biopsy uh, with immunohistochemical analysis, uh, but without um, sensi sensitivity of two uh, antibiotics. And the first line of therapy is doxycycline, or if patients uh, uh, patient have doxycycline and before. before, we prescribe another one. It's a line of macrolid uh, antibiotics. But uh, if after that we make a control test and uh, we have uh, repeat uh, these results. Uh, we make special tests um, for sensitivity to antibiotic. Uh, yeah, and especially not a general sensitivity from the blood flow, as we usually do like for other uh, infections, but we have the special uh, swab from the uterus inside the uterus, uh, just, uh, like for bactericidal uh, investigation to see the sus uh, how you are sensitive to the antibiotic exactly your endometrium because sometimes it can be difference between uh, this sensitivity 
of the intermediate antibiotic and the other sens sensitivities. So we don't know exactly. Uh, what's Next prescribed, yeah, yeah. but it's a special antibiotic. Mm -hmm. So that's why we start with a, a regular one like doxycycline, and then if we have the repeated result, the positive so, result, we will we will have another test. Yes, huge thank you for the answer. And the next question. My progesterone level is always too low on the transfer day or the day before between 8 and 24. Does it mean that my endometrium is not receptive or it has nothing to do with receptivity? My four attempts failed and I just wonder if it could be a lower progesterone. Can Hashimoto disease influence the receptivity? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, first of all, you need to know if you exclude the chronic endometritis because you have four attempts, a failed attempt. If you excluded that and uh, you have the Hashimoto diseases, uh, yes, uh, if you have uh, the arthrosis, uh, this is a good condition, but if you have the hyperterosis and your TSH level is high, you need to be corrected because of the high level uh, of uh, antibodies uh, that creates during this disease, especially if it's not um, corrected, it can influence of the receptivity. And um, if you um, progesterone level, um, I don't exactly understand. Uh, uh, if it's it very uh, depend when we measure this yeah. progesterone because level of blood it not uh, mm -hmm. sense uh, independent not yeah. de depend of level in uterus very important um, make uh, I repeat uh, biopsy from mm -hmm. uterus and the special test immunogistic chemical yeah. test mm -hmm. uh, for receptor of progesterone and only receptor of progesterone of endometrium mm -hmm. can explain us we have um, uh, the uh, uh, the, the lack insufficiency of, of uh, uh, second phase mm -hmm. or no because uh, level of blood not strict depend of uh, problem with second okay. part of your cycle yeah and i can i want to add that uh, the same pipes that we, we can use for uh, uh for see if you have a chronic endometritis and cast cells and the progesterone and estrogen levels we can use from one biopsy and to see all the, uh, those four results from one uh, one biopsy so for precise answer, a very important know what is thickness of endometrium mm -hmm. you have uh, when we uh, mm -hmm. suspect if you suspect uh, uh, insufficiency or second part of your cycle. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to uh, make uh, exactly answer yeah, for this question. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have an uh, additional comment on that, so I just display that I don't have endometriosis. The doctors mm -hmm. measured the uh, progesterone in blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we uh, we have uh, the endometriosis over ten millimeters mm -hmm. is very good, and uh, we recommend make um, level of uh, progesterone not in blood but in uh, endometrium. It's a receptor of for progesterone, immunogistochemical procedure. Yeah, and all, only after that result, we can exactly tell you if it's uh, the reason that you have the failed uh, uh, failed uh, attempt because of a low progesterone. If it's uh, from that result, you have the low insufficient level, you just uh, can add the extra uh, progesterone in a different form, just like intramuscular injection or extra vaginal uh, suppositorium is just mm -hmm. Now, uh, interesting uh, medication for subcutaneous injection, it's yeah. a liquid. Uh, but from the medication. regular analysis, we cannot uh, tell you exactly if it's, it's, it's your case or it's not. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And thank you for uh, explaining this as well. And a quick question and quick answer. How can I know I have chronic endometriosis? What is the test for that? A chronic endometriosis and chronic endometritis, okay. it's a, it's a different, a different uh, name of disease. Yeah. So endometritis 
it's uh, inflammation that we were talking about. So we, we have the biopsy uh, from the endometrium on the exactly time. And when we can see, do we have endometritis? Do we need the antibacterial treatment or not? Endometriosis is a hormonal changes. Uh, in, in your case, we can suspect from, uh, from ultrasound if we have uh, cysts and, 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 uh, on the ovaries or we have the adenomyosis or we have the a, a different um, conditions on your tubes, etc. On that time, we can suspect, uh, suspect the endometriosis, but the different uh, types of uh, conditions. Usually, if we have, if we suspect of endometriosis, our patient um, uh, complain uh, for pain. Mm -hmm chronic pain especially uh, during the intercourse and uh, heavy Between menstruation, menstruation yeah heavy menstruation. Uh, heavy menstruation and the only uh, the precise diagnostic test is the hysteroscopy diagnostic hysteroscopy or laparoscopy. Uh, or laparoscopy to see exactly the lesions on the um, uterus or ovaries etc we, we can see and uh, exactly uh, take a biopsy from that lesion and uh, go um, investigate Investigate the exactly from the histological uh, view: is it endometriosis? Is it changes in the cells that is uh, susceptible for the hormonal change, or is something different? Because uh, endometriosis is a disease when cells of endometrium or cells like endometrium we can uh, find in the uh, in other um, places oh, on, uh, on the uterus and the tubes and the ovaries. It uh, name endometriosis yeah it's a, it's a very bad condition for the implantation because it can uh, lower the uh, receptivity of the endometrium even if the every other condition like uh, window of implantation endometritis etc is excluded and uh, but uh, there is no receptive uh, condition for with the endometriosis Yes, and thank you. We have so many questions already, so I just uh, will show you some shout out <laughs> to make you rest for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your great response. Uh, not one. Uh, we will take the next question. We have a few uh, to go. Um, so uh, the next one will be this. Uh, do you use tacrolimus to lower the immune system in your treatment? Uh, uh, the ta tacrolimus is very serious uh, medicine uh, and we don't use this uh, medication uh, to lower the immune system um, because we have to very um, um, careful this all those uh, med medication, they can uh, not uh, help us during the process of embryo transfer and IVF treatment. And sometimes it can be harmful uh, for the patient, for the procedure. So if we don't have the uh, academic research that can prove us the effectiveness of this method, we cannot use in that treatment and we don't suggest that they use the every uh, and, adjuvant therapy. Uh, and before prescribe uh, this seriously um, immunological medicine, uh, you should um, very careful investigate uh, your body, um, your uh, the condition, system, of condition of your immunological system. system. Mm -hmm. Yes, and. Uh, exclude risk of oncology diseases mm -hmm. because even we we can influence on the endometrium or on um, IVF program somehow to uh, try to improve in, in our treatment but on the other case we can harm on the other systems and if you have some susceptibility to the different condition on the cancer and etc or, or you have autoimmune diseases it can be very harmful for your uh, cells for your health so we, ha we have to be very careful with that mm -hmm. thank you for the great uh, answer as well um, we will then take the question which is uh, in part so i will display it uh, one by one. I have six cycles failed 
with good quality of donor X embryos, do you think a test will help uh, regarding uh, three failed cycle, my X and two donor X, uh, all failed with, uh, er will ERA test help? Um, uh, the main and uh, the main question did you have the genetic testing of your embryos uh, and um, on your own uh, eggs and uh, we can we can uh, add this test to improve the um, the chance to, to get pregnant and um, the error test uh, if the faithful error test help please um, and the um, I don't understand the because mm -hmm. so we have the six with the all next. I can you show the, the previous one because yeah, the previous uh, one of course. Uh -huh. mm. Mm -hmm. Moving is a good quality of donor X. Do you think the error test will help? Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the error test before, yes, it, it can be helpful. Uh only in donor I had PGS. Did you exclude the endometritis? And um, yeah. in majority cases, uh, embryos with donor X have normal chromosome mm -hmm. count, mm -hmm. and um, approximately uh, eighty or eighty-five percent of embryos mm -hmm. uh, have uh, normal uh, chromosome count. Um, if you have more than three uh, negative attempts, next step it's um, uh, investigate window of implantation mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, investigate Im immunological profile of uterus and uh, very important treatment of endometriosis because endometriosis can um, in influence, influence of, of, receptivity. of receptivity, yes, absolutely. Oh. The very important the sickness of your endometrium and uh, blood flow in endometrium too. Thank you a lot for the answer. The question which was uh, consisting of uh, many uh, short ones, but thank you a lot. Mm. We have like two yeah. to go, so <laughs> we have done the URA test. The result uh, yeah. is receptive on day six. How long is the result valid and what can change this result? Uh, no, no, if you have this result, so it means this is your de exactly day, the best day for embryo transfer day and there is no change changes on that so you, you can be so no. as, as, yeah for now you know like there is no influence or other factor on this so you can be safe uh, and do your procedure do your embryo transfer on exactly that day but if we know that you have a window of implantation but sickness of endometrium is very um, thin or you have less uh, than seven yeah. end endometritis or endometriosis or any other diseases for example uh, myomas it can uh, influence of your chance of implantation not only uh, window of implantation mm -hmm. very depend of other gynecologist diseases yeah, because we the theme of uh, this presentation is the window of implantation. That's where we were talking about this method. But there is other very important factors that can influence of the uh, implantation and success of your program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, I will now display the question which I was having problem with displaying and that's why it's written by me, but it was somebody else's question. There are doctors that say that endometrial receptivity test result is valid only in the cycle when the biopsy was done. Is it true? If not, why? Um, <laughs> we're talking to Svetlana, that uh, uh, from our experience uh, is not the same it's not um, our experience. It, it's an academic, academic. A, a research we can uh, send to you this yeah, article that, that to explain that it's exactly time and not re not obligatory repeat 
uh, this uh, procedure. Yeah, so it's a one biopsy is enough to see if it's a receptor, it's not receptor. We don't use the extra uh, extra uh, biopsies, and it, we have a research for that, and we can we can see it's that. It's open research. Yeah. You can see in internet too. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, you can send it to us. We will then um, feature that in the in the comment to the video. Not a problem at all. Uh, it will be uh, very informative. So thank you for that. Okay, um, we have, I can see two more questions and it will be last two questions. Uh, can we do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, no okay so um, this will be the first one. Mm -hmm. Can low blood pressure influence the endometrium and its receptivity? Does it have any influence in getting pregnant? Um, how it's low is less than 90 uh, um, millimeters um, or is, there is no pressure. research that shows that there is an influence of the low blood pressure and endometrial receptivity for now. So uh, we cannot... Um, combine these factors for now and if you know then you are pregnant uh, you have the uh, blood pressure low usually because of the changes in circulation so there is no influence uh, especially in the first trimester right uh, so there is no uh, influence of the low blood pressure uh, during the pregnancy but uh, we cannot say that the low blood pressure can influence for the receptivity of endometrium for now, maybe we will have research on that so that we can talk about this different. Thank you, Ina and Petra. Uh, and uh, the last question then, it would be this one. Today I did a natural killer cell test and it was okay. However, I had two chemical pregnancy and was thinking about asking my doctor to add an immune protocol as well as medical to my next transfer. Is it advisable? So? Uh, we should exactly know uh, what is kind of natural killer cells uh, identify uh, identify because it's very uh, depend uh, of activity of, of count and activity and then we prescribe omidrol or uh, other uh, stimulate uh, medicine like uh, IVIG or Oh, sorry. Um, so, oh, so been, uh, oil. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> okay, IVIG or Medrol. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, should exactly know of what is the level of killer cells and, and it's a high or yeah and you have to be very precise if it's intermetrial natural killers or this is a blood natural killers because then you have the uh, blood natural killers uh, uh, investigation is not very informative because uh, the different conditions such as uh, some um, disease or uh, some other condition in your body can influence on this test but when we have the intermetrial natural killers it's it's more important to see if it's uh, it's your case it's not your case do you need to use intralipid or immunoglobulin or medrol for the next cycle to suppress uh, your immune system surprise or stimulate or stimulate depends on your profile yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you a lot Mm -hmm. for all uh, the answer and as well for all the uh, questions you have uh, asked. Everybody who was there with us, uh, thank you a lot also for your time. And uh, I have a little shout out for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all your answers. Thank you, um, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, mm -hmm. you can ask us directly by uh, email. By email, or you can follow more, uh, me on the Instagram page, Dr. Moros IVF, or you can uh, write the email to the clinic. So we can provide the all answers, and we will be very glad to see you here and to help you with your journey of IVF treatment. 
Yes, indeed. And if any case, any uh, question left without answer, we will forward everything to ECDA IVF uh, tomorrow. So your questions will be also answered if it happens that uh, they weren't displayed here. Uh, somebody also asked um, about uh, our Instagram, which... Uh, we, of course, have, yes, so uh, the Instagram information are uh, as uh, follows, mm -hmm. Egg Donation Friends, this is our Instagram uh, profile and ECDA IVF, uh, it's our expert uh, profile on Instagram, so I encourage you to follow uh, us on social media as well. Okay, okay. Uh, it will be a finish of our great evening here and thank you uh, Ina and Svetlana for your time, for your knowledge and all the support you were sharing with us today, this evening and if you would like to add anything please do that uh, or yeah, say hi and hello and yeah. bye. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your attention and we hope our answer uh, was helpful for you. Yes, it was helpful indeed, and you shared with us uh, many information, and it was really yeah. informative. And if you have any other um, questions or themes that you want to present you, just uh, don't be shy. Just have the questions that we can uh, present you and explain you in the simple words what we should do and how we can help you. Yes, indeed. And you will find us, uh, of course, on our website or you can follow us on uh, our social media. So you will be always up to date. The recording from today's webinar uh, will be available tomorrow from the uh, homepage. You will easily find it. So I just encourage you if you want to rewatch it or share it with anybody who uh, needs those information, uh, just feel free to do that. It will be a great Great pleasure to see you all here next week. Thank you one more time, Ina, and thank you one more time, Svetlana, for your time. Thank you. As thank I said, you. thank you. It will be a wrap. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.